Hello guys and welcome. Today I'll be showing you a guide of how to do Neotherian's Lair on Mythic Plus difficulty. In the guide I'll show you a good way how to get the 100% completion bonus in which packs you want to pull, which packs you want to avoid, and generally which packs you should just be mindful of because they have some sort of special ability. Now keep in mind that the FXs do change every week. This video was recorded during Sanguine and Overflowing, which are definitely on the easier side of the spectrum. But I'll do my best to talk about how the FXs might influence which packs you pull and which you leave alone as we go through the dungeon. One thing I do want to mention though before we get into it is that your group setter certainly has a great influence on what kind of pulls you want to do as well. Especially whether you have multiple stunts, whether you have things like Death Grip, whether you have things like Misdirection or Tricks of the Trade. And just keep in mind that you might want to alter your route a little bit depending on what kind of utility your group has available. So the affixes we currently have are Sanguine and Overflowing, as previously mentioned. Uh, Sanguine leaves a pool under each mob that dies, which basically does damage to your team members and heals every enemy mob that stands in them. So what you want to do is just continuously move the mobs away from the ones that die. Um, it's not every mob that spawns the pool. Um, mobs that are spawned by mini bosses or bosses do not but every other mob does. So as a general rule of thumb, you always want to move them, but if you are doing a boss that spawns at, you don't have to worry about it. If you are so lucky that you're playing with classes that can move the mobs, such as Death Knights using Death Grip, just have your DPS help you out by moving the mobs uh, out of Sanguine. If you're not that lucky, then the only thing you can really do is line of sight the mobs if they're arranged, or run away uh, to force them to move and it's kind of important that you do it as fast as possible so you don't end up healing the mobs to full and even in the event that you do heal them to full you obviously want them to get out of sanguine as fast as possible so you can kill them. Now the second affix overflowing means that any healing done above the player's max health will be put as an absorb shield on that player and it's a negative absorb shield which means you have to heal through it and essentially it locks your healer out of doing very large heals because if they crit someone will most likely just die because you can't heal through the barrier. It's one of the things where it's only really a challenge for the healer, it's not the hardest challenge, but just keep in mind that your healer actually has to work for it. So the first pack you encounter is a giant scorpion that's surrounded by a bunch of smaller ones. It doesn't really have any particular special effects, so you can very easily pull it along with the crocodiles in the water. They're just nice easy percentages that doesn't really challenge your group at all. The only thing you have to be mildly careful of is that when the little scorpions die, they explode in a pool of acid. They also add sanguine. So as you kill them off, you obviously want to move the mobs a little bit. The next two mobs you see are two worms. They will occasionally burrow underground and pop up in a new location. And all they'll do is they'll channel a frontal cone with a very low range. So as long as you don't stand in front of them, you're fine. You can generally pull everything in this corridor in one big pull, um, but if things get a bit disorganized or you get a little bit too far of your healer, just stop a second, kill off the small scorpions, and then go grab the worms. Now if you were doing this with another FX, such as bolstering, I would recommend you only do the scorpion plus its small adds and then the two crocodiles, and just make sure your DPS single targets down the large ones before you cleave the smaller ones. Generally, as a rule of thumb, that's always how you should do bolstering. Single target first, AoE second. A lot of groups do AoE first and single target second, and it really just ends up being quite terrible. Next up are the rock golems. It's a pack that a lot of groups skip, but I would strongly recommend doing them, because they are quite easy if you do it right, and they're certainly worth a lot of percentages, like all the small crawlers give a fair amount of percentages, and obviously the rock golems in themselves are worth quite a lot. So the trick to doing them is that you have to be wary of one mechanic, which is called piercing shards. Whenever the large rock golem knocks your tank back, um, momentarily afterwards, it does an ability called piercing shards, which is a frontal cone AOE damage and dot that it'll cast multiple times, but it's something where you can stun the golem and then it doesn't do it. If you stun it too early, it'll still do the shards. So the trick is whenever the tank gets knocked back, you know it's your cue to stun. Coordinate stunts in your group so you have at least two, sometimes even three, depending on your DPS, and just make sure they're not a big problem. After the golems were blessed with an incredibly easy pack, you grab the crocodile from the river and the three guys standing on the bridge, and they don't really do anything at all. Just group them up, cleave them like normal. Make sure as you have it under control and they're about to die, that you have a DPS jump down to the next boss to start the roleplay, because there is still 15 seconds of roleplay and you just kind of want to get it started, so you don't have to stand with the entire group and wait for the roleplay to finish. 
Now, I will actually skip the bosses in this video. Um, I think there's a lot of content out there, a lot of guides that talk about the boss abilities, and it's not really what we're looking at in this particular guide. So after you've gotten Rockmora out of your way, you can take the fun barrels, you can throw fish from the barrels for whatever reason, but really now we're going to go into Corridor, where there's a lot of mobs that are available, but we're really only interested in a very few. The ones that we want to do are the melee ones and the large basilisks, because they just follow you and they're easy to cleave. The ones we want to avoid are generally anything that's a trapper or a pelter. The trappers and the pelters will target a group member at random and hurl projectiles at them, which just does an incredible amount of damage at higher difficulties, and they make them very hard to move as well. Now, the first mob you want to grab is the breaker, and you want to make sure you generate a little bit of threat of him before you move him, so your DPS doesn't peel him off you, and then you want to go grab the basilisk patrol and the drummer. The drummer doesn't do anything because he just drums, so he's very easy percentages, but there are two other abilities that you want to be mindful of in this pack. The first ability is called Stone Gaze and comes from the Basilisk, which is an interruptible cast that will stun your tank if it successfully finishes. I recommend that the tank kicks the first one and your DPS can take any consecutive casts. The second ability is called Avalanche and comes from the Breaker, which is a frontal cone ability that will deal damage to anyone standing in it, so face them away from your group. It'll also cause debris to fall from the ceiling on a random party member, which does actually deal a quite considerable amount of damage. So thankfully there's not a lot else that does a ton of damage when you pull the breakers, but this is why we want to avoid having the breakers with a lot of other things. A small note here is that if you are too slow at killing the drummer, it'll spawn an additional ad. Just pick it up, cleave it, it's not the biggest deal if it happens. Moving on though, we have one of the harder packs, which is a breaker, as I just talked about, and then two pelters. Now the pelters, as I previously mentioned, uh, will target a random party member and keep throwing rocks at them, which deals an incredibly high amount of damage and higher mythic difficulties. And they'll also occasionally jump uh, in a random like direction, which means that you can't keep them grouped up for cleave. If you have death knights, it's a very good time to grab them back in, but generally you can only kill them one at a time, which makes them take a lot longer, which makes them deal more damage. And this is definitely one of the pulls where if you have defensive cooldowns, now is definitely the time to use it because there's a lot of damage on people that aren't the tank. And this is why you generally want to clear up the packs you pulled before you pull pelters, and you want to clear up pelter packs you're currently engaged with before you pull other packs, just because if you still have a pelter shooting at you, someone will probably die as you're doing the next pull. Now, after the pelters, you have another rock golem pack, this time without the small crawlers. Do your stun rotation as previous mentioned, and it's easy peasy lemon squeezy. Next up is the boss room, where you do actually have to clear quite a considerable amount of trash. It is possible to only clear the left side and pull the boss, but if you get really unlucky with the totems and you have to kill a totem near one of the trash packs on the right, you will aggro them. So I generally recommend clearing the entire room. You do need to kill a little bit of extra mobs for the percentages anyways, so it's not a big deal. Now, the first pack you pull is a breaker and a shaper. The shaper functions like the trappers and pelters, where it'll target a random member and deal damage to them. The difference is that this time it's an interruptible cast. It casts really fast and it casts try quicken, but kick as many as you can. Now, I often pull them along with the golems. It's nice and easy cleave, and the golems are really not that hard as long as you have someone to do the two stun rotation. Um, and that's about it. There is a breaker though as well, which does add the damage from the falling debris, so it is a quite high damage pull. If you have a modifier like raging, where they deal 100% extra damage under 30%. If you have bolstering, I would recommend just doing the pull in two. You can take the at uh, the first pack and just pull them back a little bit. If you pull them exactly where they stand, the golems will actually aggro them in their patrol path. So after them, you can clear the room in two ways. You can either go for the pelton on the right, and then the little shaper and geolite. Like, both the packs are really easy. You can pull the two packs on the right together. The problem is they're so far apart and they're casters, so they're not very likely to move, which makes it hard to cleave. If you feel confident that your healer can keep up and that you have classes that benefit from multi-target that isn't like directly standing next to each other, you can pull them together. If not, just pull them one by one. It is certainly is like simpler and easier. And the last pack in the room is another breaker and two pelters. This is a very high random damage on your group. 
two pelters who can target group members and the breaker with the falling debris. Again, it's not overly hard. The only thing you have to be careful of is if the pelters jump back near the boss, you have to taunt them as the tank and you have to run far away from them because things like ignite from mages, barrage, everything like that will incidentally pull the boss, which obviously is not something you're really that interested in. But as you clear the room, you go ahead, you fight the boss, and you go on from there. Next up is a pack that you generally want to skip. They have breakers and pelters and are generally reasonably hard. They're not impossible by any means, they're just not needed. If you needed easier percentages because you struggled, you can pull the crocodiles in the water straight ahead. If not, then you just go on and proceed to the third boss. If you're unsure how much you should have here, you should always be at 68%. If somehow you are at 64%, there is another pack as we go past the third boss you can pull that's kind of standing in the way, but you can skip it. So ideally you want to be 68. If you're 64, you can keep going, but any lower than that, you have to pull the crocodiles or you have to pull the pack that we just passed. So next up is a corridor with four trash packs. The tr packs are situated in one group, one group, and then essentially two groups. It is possible to pull them separately, but you never really do that because they're quite easy. Now, my recommendation is that you pull the packs two at a time, unless you're a very well-geared group and know exactly what they're doing, in which case you're probably not watching this. Now, the first two packs have breakers, they have worms, they have a shaper, they have uh, grub masters, and they have a little geolite. Now, you always kill the geolite first, because it's very low health and it drops fireballs from the sky that you just have to move from, which does a crap ton of damage. So you always kill the Geolite first, even with bolstering. Secondly is you ideally want to kill the Grub Masters just because they spawn Grubs. But as long as you just group everything together, everything is melee and you can just cleave at will. The thing you really have to watch out for is that the Grub Masters will periodically spawn little Grubs on the ground. The Grubs will cast a Metamorphosis, which you can stun, or you can kill the Grubs because they're quite low health. Whatever you do, just make sure the Metamorphosis never finishes, because if that happens, they Metamorph into a giant worm, which will have a pool of acid around it that makes it impossible for melee to hit it without taking a ton of damage. And it'll uh, periodically pull in one of your party members into the acid pool, which also does a crap load of damage. So the mantra is always make sure none of the grubs metamorph. In case they do, the big ad they spawn is just first priority. Sometimes though, it can get a little messy. Just make sure you face the breakers away from the group and you should be good. The next two packs are very easy. All they have is one large worm and a grub master. The smaller worms that accompany them have no special effects other than just hitting hard, but I recommend opening with a stun on the worms. You can AOE them down in seconds and then you can clean up the two big ones. Just be careful that you don't stun the big ones in the sanguine pools that the small one leaves when they die, because in that case they'll probably heal to full. And on top of that, just look out for the grubs and make sure you kill them or interrupt them before they finish the metamorphosis cast. And after you finish off the pack, you go on to boss time. After you kill the boss and drop down, the first pack you'll encounter down here is a pack with a breaker and a demolisher. Now, if you were at 68% before you reached the previous corridor, you can simply skip this pack by walking to the right, as shown in this video. However, if you do need to kill them, they're pretty easy. The breaker is still a frontal cone and the falling debris. The demolisher will transform into a giant golem, which will fix it on one of your group members. It can be slowed, it can be stunned. Just make sure you don't take the melee hits from it. Now, the next pack you pull is pretty hard. It consists of a breaker and two trappers. And the pack does have a considerable amount of group damage, simply because the trappers will hit random group members and the breakers still have the falling debris. The trappers will occasionally cast a spell called Bound, which can be interrupted, which essentially stuns the target it's cast on. Make sure you interrupt them. They often cast it at the same time, so you might want to save an AoE stun or an AoE silence for them, or have people assigned to kick in different targets. Next up are two separate packs of one scorpion and one trapper. And now the scorpions hits incredibly hard, on anyone in the group. So unless you're doing this on a low difficulty, I would always recommend that you crowd control the trapper and then you focus on the scorpions. And since there are two scorpions, it's often a good idea to have your group split up their defensives between these two scorpions so you don't use all of them on one of them. 
It's not uncommon to actually lose a group member or two as you do this. Just don't release and let someone rush you because the walk back is pretty long. You spawn all the way up back at the second boss. And just as a final thing, just be careful you don't pull the second scorpion too fast. It does actually take your healer a little while just to heal up your group again. But the damage is very high, so rather safe than sorry. But after you're done with the scorpions, you should be at 100% and ready to whack the last boss. So yeah guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments, any criticism, any constructive suggestions on how to improve both the video and the run, feel free to let me know. If you would like to see another dungeon or different affixes, let me know in the comments, I'll definitely read through them. And then, as a final piece of advice, always remember to bring that one friend that we all have, you know, the guy that casually is just a gigantic lock sack and he can just trade you his 885 Titan Forge Relics, because you know what, he already has that covered. So yeah guys, thanks for watching and I will definitely see you in the next one.